Hi, my name's Phil Hubbard, and I'd like to talk to you today about something that's intrigued me for quite a while, evaluating technology for language learning. You know, as teachers, we evaluate textbooks and classroom activities all the time, but now that we're in the digital age, a new set of skills is required. Today, I want to talk about the what, who, why, and how of evaluation. Let's start with what to evaluate. So, the first thing to think about in evaluation is the environments that you have to evaluate. You could be working with technology in your classroom, in the lab, at home, in a mobile activity, What's important is for you to know what you have and to be able to make the best use of that. The second area of evaluation, and the one that I've been most interested in, is evaluating the resources. These could be the learning materials themselves. In the past, this was disks and CD-ROMs, but increasingly, we're talking about online software and mobile apps. Media needs to be evaluated both for its content and level appropriateness. The tasks themselves that the students do require evaluation, both individual tasks and especially collaborative tasks. Uh, and finally, the tools that are used by the students, and in some cases by the teacher and the students together, for comprehension, for production, and for interaction need to be evaluated. The next area who evaluates. Now, I'm assuming that the evaluation is going to be done by you, but your role can change. The most basic role is to be an evaluator for students in your class. Uh, another role that's related to that is to be a consumer of others' published reviews about a particular task or piece of software that you might be interested in. Uh, a third area is your role as a guide, helping your students to evaluate materials uh, and other software that they might be using. And finally, you might end up being a reviewer for others, either for other teachers in your institution or even a larger audience in publications. The third area, why evaluate? So there are two basic reasons to evaluate. You want to determine the potential, the potential value of an application or a task or a tool or a piece of media. This is predictive or what we call judgmental evaluation. You might also want to be able to determine the actual value or the potential success of something after you've used it. This is retroactive or empirical evaluation. Uh, in this case, you can evaluate the outcomes, you know, what your students actually did or produced. Uh, you can use a process of evaluation and reflection as the uh, task is going on. You can use a survey or interview students after the fact. And one thing that's important to realize is that with this type of retroactive evaluation, you can make changes then based on these results that can feed back to future uses. Now, how to evaluate. Um, there are three basic approaches to evaluation. The most common and probably best known is the checklist. Checklists produced uh, either by professional groups or even by individuals that seem to resonate well with your own beliefs. A second approach is to use second language acquisition research concepts and build a framework for that. This is something uh, I think famously done in our field by Carol Chappelle. Uh, she identified six uh, categories based on second language acquisition interactionist theory, uh, language learning potential, meaning focus, learner fit, authenticity, impact, and practicality. And those categories then are broken down into subcategories so that teachers or others wanting to do the evaluation can identify how well they fit with what uh, this particular approach to second language acquisition entails. 
A third area, and the one that I've been most uh, concerned with over the years, is what I refer to as a methodological framework. In this case, you don't make pre-statements about, necessarily, about uh, what is good or what is not good. You begin by observing what's actually in the task or the software. That's followed by the judgment stage. And the judgment occurs at two different levels. One is teacher fit. You want to make sure that whatever software or task or activity that you're using fits your own beliefs, your own theories about what language is and how languages are acquired. The second area is the student fit. You want to make sure this is at the right level. It has something that will hold the student's interest and engagement and takes into account where they are and what their objectives are, uh, often in line with the syllabus of your course. A few further considerations. You need to consider preparation and follow-up activities. How will whatever you do be integrated with the rest of your class? Second, what kind of learner training might help? What do students need to know or be able to do that you're not sure they can going into this? And finally, what kind of teacher control or monitoring or support might be needed? For more information, uh, let me invite you to take a look at one of my websites, which covers some of this material. If you Google an invitation to call, uh, you'll find uh, my Foundations of Computer Assisted Language Learning web, hopefully, and Unit 2 covers evaluation. And of course, you'll want to do the evaluation chapter of the second edition of Robert Blake's Brave New Digital Classroom.